in the morning. I wanted pancakes. But I wanted sleep. Come on, Ryan. There's plenty of stuff that we could do while we're just waiting for the pancakes to be done. We could watch some TV. I mean, we can watch something like maybe, uh, uh, we can watch something about geography or evolution or dilation in the scale factor. I don't like these stupid educational shows that play at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's all like stupid educational shows like Dora and Honey Boo Boo. Well, there's nothing else for us to do. Why don't we just watch it and see if we can learn something very interesting? Ah, fine. Uh... Hi, I'm Mr. Dr. Professor Ryan Hansen. Go to Biscuit Hut. The best place to get biscuits. Ooh, I love Biscuit Hut. Uh, I want to get some biscuit. Why'd you turn that off? Because biscuits are stupid. Why? Why are they stupid? What do you have against biscuits, Ryan? I, 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 I just, I, I want to watch you something know, else. I, you know what? I, I don't know. No. No. <laughs> want to watch something? Do it. Well, it was just a commercial for Biscuit Hut. Wait, I wonder if that mad teacher educational show is on. Hmm, let's, let's see. Welcome to math. Welcome to math class. I'm gonna teach you about geometry. Look at this chip hanging on of a banana. Now look at this bigger chip hanging on of a banana. That image was dilated on a scale factor of three. That means that each side of the second one was three times bigger than the corresponding <laughs> side of the original image. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah science, science rules. rules. Yeah, we're winning. We're learning. Yeah, we're, we're, so, <laughs> yeah. Shut up, kids. This is math class. Go, Go geography. geography. Ugh. That was a weird show. What? I can't hear you. He's talking too loudly. I think I need to check on the pancakes. We need to flex the bran flakes? No, we need to check on the pancakes! Oh! Why did you just say so? Oh no! The pancakes, they turned into raisins! Oh, and no, no! The pretzels, they turned into marshmallows! Ooh, spooky ghost! Ah, 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 turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off! Hey! 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 What? Hey! Fine. Hey! Fine. Fine. Hey! Watch it. Fine. Woo! Hi, I'm Mr. Dr. Professor Ryan Hansen, and welcome to another episode of Man vs. Geometry. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at dilation in nature. So let's get started. I'm going to look, go looking around over here to see if I can find it. But it might take a while. I'll come back to you when I find some. Hi, welcome back. So I've been searching for hours, and I traveled really, really far, and I finally found an example of dilation in nature. But well, you're standing in the exact same place, and it's only been five minutes. What? Who are you? I don't know. Well, get out of here! Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, now back to my examples of dilation. So right over here, I just happened to find these lying on the ground and I totally didn't put them here while I was off camera. So, as you can tell, these are rectangles. Those aren't rectangles because you don't know the angle or side measures. I thought I told you to get out of here. Okay. Sorry about that, but what's this? Are these... These... There are markings on them. They have the side measures, and they have the right angle marking. That means that these are, that these must be rectangles because these are all right angles, and these sides are are congruent. But you know what else I just noticed? These are also similar polygons. That means that each for every side on this rectangle 
is three times larger than its corresponding size on this rectangle. See, this is one, this is three, this is 1.5, that's 4.5. So the scale factor is three. This is amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better example of dilation in nature that totally wasn't put there before we recorded. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Matter vs. Geometry. I hope you had as much fun as I did exploring dilation in nature. Hey, what are you doing? I told you never to come back here. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, oh, God. Get back here, you hooligan. Can you smell something burning? I thought it was you. Oh, no. The raisins, they turned into Lego bricks. And the marshmallows turned into a hat with a balloon inside. Oh, no. Where do you get this microwave and frying pan from? It's not a microwave, Ryan. It's a microwave oven. <gasps> I'll get it. Hey, good day, eh? How about you? Good. I have a delivery for... Um, for you, sir. Here you go. Take box. Have a good day! Yeah! Is it for us? No, it's for our neighbor's mad scientist. Oh, yeah, it's so weird. We always get his packages in the mail. Maybe that's why he's mad. Wait a minute, is that where you got the microwave from? A frying pan. Science! You know what it does? Um, it looks like some sort of laser gun. Hmm. Uh, it looks like some sort of number entry device, something like that. Just put in numbers, yeah, and start with an S. It's like some sort of laser gun. Huh. It shoots something with it! Wait, no, 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 don't shoot a laser gun in my house! Or it's our house. Yeah, good point. Why not? Pew. Whoa! You turned that box of raisins into a smaller box of raisins. I think this is a dilation gun. Well, why have we been finding so many examples of dilation in the world? Aside from some sort of educational video about dilation and scale factors. <laughs> <laughs> Now that'd be silly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really, really, really silly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that Man vs. Geometry show. Uh, you know, you actually kind of look like the guy from the Man vs. Geometry show. I don't see the resemblance. Anyway, let's go to Warp Suckers. It's a serious gun that has unknown powers that we can't comprehend and has a label that specifically says not to shoot things without reading the instruction manual that we're too lazy to read. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't mess with it then. Oh, uh, the label says not to shoot things. And we're not shooting things, we're shooting stuff, and that's a big difference, Brian. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. We need to read the instruction manual. Okay. I can figure this out. Pew. Whoa, what did you do? You dilated it so small that now it's so small we can't even read it. Now how are we supposed to pretend like we're reading how dilation works when really we already know we're just trying to explain to the viewers while staying in character. I don't know, maybe if we turn on the TV and we might be able to possibly find an educational show explaining everything that we need to know about dilation, Ryan. Think about that. Logic! <sighs> that shapes the size of a figure, but not its shape. And the scale factor describes how much a figure is enlarged or reduced. So you're probably wondering, who uses dilation in scale factors? Well, it is mostly used by computer programmers and graphic artists. 
However, we can use dilation in order to make a simple square bigger, which I'm going to show you how to do. So as you can tell, these are the quarters from the vertices. And when you dilate something, you change, all, you multiply all the sides by the scale factor. So let's say the scale factor is going to be 2. So what you're going to do, see this is 3, 1, 2, 3 units. So we're going to make it 6 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we're going to do that to, the, to both sides. 3, 4, 5, 6. So now, that new image is going to be this big. So as you can tell, that is dilated by a scale factor of 2. Now you're probably wondering, how do I dilate a triangle like that? Well, nobody wants to know that. Shut up. So I'm about to show you how to dilate a triangle. Without nobody wants to know how to dilate a triangle, sir. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this without using a coordinate plane. So what you do is bisect each angle like this. Now, of course, this isn't exact. I would be using a protractor or something like that. But, you know, this is just an example to show basically how it works. So it's not going to be exact. So what you do is you take a compass, you put the center right here, go to the middle, and swing it around, and you would put the vertices right here. So then you go up to there, and you do that to all sides. So, for example, right there, and then right there. Of course, this isn't going to be exact, but you know, in geometry, what you see is now what you get. So now, you put the, each, the new vertices are right here. And now this is dilated on a scale factor of 2. So thank you for learning about dilation and scale factor. Boo! Oh, shut up. I Boo. like the angry mouth teacher better. Well, that was fun, wasn't it, Jack?
Good job, Brian. You have done well. You have successfully solved for the dilated figure of that door after me hitting the staff against the floor so many times. But you have missed one little detail, Brian. You haven't even dilated the real door yet. Yes. Now you will suffer, and I will finally get my revenge. Wait, what's that over there? Is that a table and a mirror? I think I heard. I, wait a minute. I... No, well, don't don't look at that. I uh, I, I didn't put that away yet. Uh, don't look at it. I heard about this before. I know. Oh my god, I remember when I had this pickaxe in my pocket the whole time and I was able to break through the wall. Alright, now, now it's time to go home. Hey, where was I when I was in that room? Yeah, I actually don't really care that much. Anyway, now it's time to go home. I will get my mail back someday! Ryan Hudson! My name is... God, that was just a dream. Glad that's all over. I wonder what time it is. Hey Ryan! Guess what? I'm making some pancakes this morning! Come downstairs when you're ready! Okay.